we do see that there should be implications for um, for using this as a treatment for mental health uh, disorders. So here we are looking at anxiety, depression, and I also think addiction could be one of the things. So much of the research has been done around the short term physiological benefits and some of the more longer term ones, as you've mentioned, uh, around blood pressure. What I'm really interested in is the cognitive and the mental health benefits, um, not only in the short term, but also in the long term as well. What are the, the longer term implications on your cognitive health of, of these kind of treatments? But I'm guessing the research around that is a lot more complicated because you're dealing on a subjective level rather than measuring data. How much time and attention are you thinking about these long term? cognitive and mental health benefits of cold water immersion and how are we going to tackle some of those obstacles I've mentioned in terms of actually tracking and monitoring that data? We definitely need more studies showing what is the what is the impact of cold water immersions on mental health on the long term. So we don't really have that many studies yet on that but we 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 do have studies showing that if you do cold water immersions, how does that affect our um, mood and how does that affect uh, our um, brain uh, connectivity? There are also studies showing that um, the, the brain connectivity is uh, is improved, but also the positive um, uh, self awareness, positive self awareness, is uh, also improved compared to a group who didn't do cold water immersions, and uh, the, a way of thinking about the world in a positive way. That that will change, and that has already been shown. But we also seen why. So we have studies showing that dopamine and noradrenaline increases when we do cold water immersions, which will explain why we do feel better and get a better mood. So we do have that uh, data showing why we all why this is actually um, real. So what we don't know is how this can change depression anxiety or even maybe um um what what can we say um um how this could change in like established mental health disorders is is there a possibility that it could be an addition to other interventions pharmacological interventions and 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 maybe psych psychotherapy and things like that do you feel like the, the, again i don't want to put words into your mouth but is there the opportunity that these kind of alternative treatments could be could be part of the puzzle yes i think that there is a there is a huge possibility that all these uh, traits that we see all these acute effects that we see on mental health that people um, anecdotally say, but also been shown in a case study of a depressed woman. This is a science uh, case study from the UK, where they also have a randomized control trial. I know coming up, it's not published yet, but we do, we do see that there should be implications for, um, for using this as a treatment for mental health uh, disorders. So here we are looking at anxiety, depression, and I also think addiction could be one of the things and, and also, yeah. So I think that there should definitely be studies done on this to see how much of an impact does it have? Is it enough or could it be an add-on treatment, which I think that cold water immersion is for metabolism, for example. I never go out and say, well, use cold water immersions instead of exercise. No, I see this as an add-on to that because that's going to increase your metabolism. So use it in combination. But what it does have an an, an um, possibility to do is keeping people uh, maybe from doing drugs, maybe uh, from feeling uh, totally down when they are depressed. And when they feel depressed and they are down, they may, maybe the cold water emotions can elevate their mood and keep it maybe even stable. So we do need we do need to find alternative ways other than drugs. We do need to also prevent instead of just treating uh, what is already. Um, a disease. So we do need to also use this as a prevention tool to say, well, do this just like exercise. It's preventing you from becoming depressed, maybe, maybe becoming um, anxious, maybe also keeping you away from, it could also be addictions to food. It could be many things. I mean, it opens so many things and so many doors. So I think that, that there's room for so much research down the line. And I hope that this will like we would do this so we can get some more answers to this. It will be very fascinating, I think. <laughs>